Why do trains need to slow down for curves? There's two reasons. One I'm gonna make a full video on, and it's that video now. But today we're talking about how we can avoid slowing down for curves, or at least by as much, by using tilting trains, and another thing that we'll get to in a minute, though stick around for that. Anyway, if you're here for the Class 390, we got a full video on that, so go check that out. But let's get going. Railways tend to have curves, which aren't great for the passengers if we want to go fast. But why? To turn a train, the rails curve. The outside rail creates a centripetal for on the wheel set, which begins turning the train. And most of the time, this works great for the train, but less so for everything in it. As the train is turned by the rails, the stuff inside isn't, so this happens. Not great. Alright, how can we fix this? Wait, what am I saying? This is literally the title. It's tilting. Everything in the train already has a downward force. This is what keeps them in place. The human body can take lots of downward force, so this isn't a problem at all. But how can we turn this sideways? force, experienced by everything in the train, into a downwards force. Like aircraft, we can rotate the body of the vehicle, and from the point of view from inside the vehicle, this is in fact a downward force now. Now, trains don't fly, unless something went really wrong, so can't go all the way tilted. But by using some tilt, we can make things a lot more comfortable on board, as that red arrow has been converted from horizontal to vertical, and we can now go faster before things start falling over again. Perfect. Wait, so... Why don't all trains tilt? Tilting actually comes with several downsides. Starting off with the obvious, these are complex systems that require lots of maintenance. Let's see what this actually looks like, and hope my computer won't combust. Alright, where's he at? There we go. Let's get you set up. Key, reverser. Quit yelling at me, I'm trying to fix it. How does this even work again? Finally. And I can already feel the lag. Let me ask someone with a better computer. And there we go. Look at that tilting. Yeah, this stuff isn't simple. Tilting a train is not super easy to do. This requires lots of maintenance, and not only is this expensive, but it puts trains out of service for longer. So, is that really worth the time saving of going faster? Most of the time, that answer seems to be no. So yeah, that's tilting trains, and why they're not super common. Except, there is another way to speed up curves. Let's go back a minute. We need to tilt to make things comfortable on board, and going too quick on curves can derail the train. But what if I told you we can solve both of these problems without complex systems on the train? This is super elevation, or can't. Instead of tilting the body of the train, why not just tilt the whole track bed? By having the rails slightly tilted, not only do we split the centrifugal force into two components, but the component of the centripetal force contributing to the moment trying to derail the train, the green one, is now smaller. In addition, the reaction force from the rails now contributes to the centripetal force turning the train in purple. This this is awesome. More stable trains at high speeds, and more comfortable for the passengers. Let's cant all the rails. Okay, as always, there's a few issues. First of all, while it makes it harder for the train to roll to the outside of the curve, there's a larger risk of it rolling the other way. Without the centripetal force, or we'll call it centrifugal here, the weight of the train makes it want to slide down the slope in green here, which isn't great. <laughs> In order to keep the centripetal force big enough, trains need to be going fast over this, which may be an issue if slow trains use the same line, or if trains need to stop, so we can't use too much can't. 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 You know what, we're gonna call it super elevation from now, but not only does the track bed get tilted, but sometimes one of the rails too. Now the calculations to find out how much is right are a bit complicated, and there's quite a few good videos out there already, so I'll leave it at that, and uh, yeah, see us next time. Bye.